I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. What's going on everybody? I pray all is well. As we dive into this lesson, as we give the Lord all the honor, the glory, and all the praise, my title says, Beautiful Church Building, But Dead Church Building. Beautiful Church Building, But Dead Church Building. And uh, the Lord took me back to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, we want to talk about Sardis. The church in Sardis that had a name they was dead. Now it's no secret my brothers and sisters we got many church buildings up and some of them are so beautiful. Man it's just awesome the way they look. And then we have some that's not so beautiful. Nowadays we see people making a church out of anything because so many people want to be a pastor. I'm not being funny by saying that but how is it now everybody want to be a pastor? You ever been in the church where everybody is a pastor? Or they are prophet and they don't have nobody to really preach to in the congregation because the congregation is so small and they, and everybody is a prophet or a pastor. And if the choir wouldn't sit down, they wouldn't have no congregation. Y'all, I'm not being funny at all, trust me. I'm speaking what's real. Because it's too many buildings up that need to be straightened up. In Revelation, Jesus comes hard on these churches, except for Smyrna. In Philadelphia, the other five had some major problems, y'all. And I always tell people, look in Revelation and compare the church that you attend right now with one of those ones in Revelation because I guarantee you it's going to match up with one of those churches in Revelation. Might even match up with two. So if you have your Bibles, my brothers and sisters, this is not to condemn you, but it's a wake-up call. And we need to realize that we are living in these days man where times is just sick it's a lot of folks man in, in the house of God playing games but to the ones that's doing right and living for the Lord may the Lord bless you so if you have your Bibles we're going back to Revelation chapter 3 and we're dealing with Sardis and the Bible says and unto the angel of the church in Sardis write these things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. Now notice, he said, I know thy works. Don't think for one second that you're getting away with what you're doing. Because the Lord knows thy works. These things said he that had the seven spirits of God. We talked about that number seven. The spiritual number, number, excuse me, of completion. We know about the seven churches, the seven angels. See, John is taken up, what this is here is John is taken up in the spirit on the day of the Lord. And this is the revelation of Jesus, the Christ, not the revelation of John. And it's so amazing that the Lord let all this out about these churches. Something was seriously wrong with Sardis. Some churches even have a beautiful name. The building is beautiful, but it's just spiritually dead. And once the church is spiritually dead, that's in bad shape. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to be in the church building, especially where the Lord is not at. Because last time I checked, the Lord that I serve is not dead. He is alive. Verse 2 says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now we know we, we, we are not perfect. But we perfect what we do. Maturity. We supposed to grow and, and, and get older and wiser, not older and dumber. Jesus said, I know your works are not perfect. I know this. But why is it when you know what you need to be working on, you're not working on it? He said, he said be watchful. And then he said, strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. When you are in a dead church, it's dead. Everything about the church is dead. Verse 3 says, remember 
Therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast, and what's the word? Don't nobody like to hear. Repent. He said, If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Verse 3 is very powerful. Repent. Let's bring this to, day, to, to our day's time, y'all. The homosexuals, all in the music ministry, need to repent. The lesbians need to repent. The messed up deacons need to repent. The messed up minister of music, the people that's shacking up, the messed up pastors that's falling and committing adultery, have I named one of your sins yet? I'm not just bashing on homosexuals. I'm not, I'm not bashing on nobody. I'm bringing out the truth. Where's the repentance at? Hold fast and repent. See, most people don't want to hear about Revelation because Revelation started off addressing the churches. When you know better, you should do better. He said, therefore, thou shalt not watch. Mm. Not watch. Something about that little word, not in there. I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour. Mm. And somehow that word not was in verse 3 twice. I, if therefore thou shalt not watch, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Why so many people waiting on the rapture? If you ain't got your house in order, what you keep talking about a rapture for? What you keep talking about going to heaven for? When you're not even repenting. The whole among us that's in the church horned around. See, sin, period, that's in the house of God. He said he was going to come back looking for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Judgment starts in the pulpit. I hope there's some preachers listening at this while we keep wanting to skip over these type of books in the Bible. Revelation, reveal, the end. The apocalypse, some like to call it. Reveal, that's what it means. Just simply means to reveal. And we got people talking about you don't need to know Revelation. Verse 4 says, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Y'all, let me tell you something, because I'm not afraid to admit this. And I still have to work on this scripture. Verse 4 is the scripture that checked me so hard. Checked me so hard. And y'all check me when y'all hear me say every. Now nah, let me let me say this right because I ain't never said everybody in the church is, is wicked. I always have a saying that I say if the Lord have. I just said in this video. Check me, Holy Ghost. I say if the Lord is not in the building, hmm, the spirit is gone. You need to leave. But I, I I have to also remember that the Lord keeps certain people in certain places, and it's not up to JT to tell somebody. Like, like I know the Lord better than the Lord know the Lord to leave that building. Why look at this verse 4. Let me read it again. Thou has a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. This scripture shows you there are still a few names a few good people in messed up churches. Oh yes. Because he said they have not defiled their garments and they're going to walk with me in the white for they are worthy. You mean there's some worthy people in some messed up churches? Yes. According to this scripture. And I have been checked plenty of times with this scripture. Because my it, it, it's out of love and my heart goes out because I can't stand when people are, are being abused and they sit up in, in a messed up church and, and, and if you're not careful you're going to follow any and everything that's the only reason why I be saying that but he said right here there are a few names even in Sardis now this is the dead church they got a name but they dead probably was a beautiful looking building but they are dead I said this when I heard somebody talked about um 
um, what's his name? Uh, Eddie Long, New Birth. It was a video of talking about everybody in the church is, is wicked and going to hell. You can't say stuff like that. You don't know everybody. <laughs> That's a lot of folks, over 3,000 members. So when you look at verse 4 here, it shows you it's good people still in a messed up building. Verse 5 says, He that overcome it, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And we know white means purity. He said, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. That's a beautiful scripture for the ones that overcome it. You're going to be clothed in white raiment, purity. You, you will not be blotted out of the book of life. Oh, come on, somebody. But he will confess your name before the father and before the angels. We don't know when to shout, brothers and sisters because if your name is not in that book of life it's a terrible time for you verse 6 says he that had an earth let him hear what the spirit said until excuse me unto the churches mm. revelation chapter 3 verses 1 through 6 we're going to stop right there because Philadelphia is the next church Sardis, dead name. My brothers and sisters, how many of us are sitting in a dead church right now? Ain't nothing but fussing, fighting. <laughs> I, I seen something yesterday. I won't reveal names. Passed by the church police everywhere on the church ground people into it it's sad when you ain't calling on the Lord and you got to call on 911 I leave with that may the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you peace